Here we have a logarithmic equation that we need to solve. First notice that we have 2 over x here, which means that x cannot be 0. The second of all, there are additional restrictions imposed on x just because it's a logarithmic equation. When we have a logarithm of b with the base a, the base has to be positive and cannot be 1. And also argument b has to be positive. So those are the restrictions on both logarithms. First, let's look at the bases. We have 5x and 120x. So these are the conditions that are imposed on the basis. Now, first two conditions are satisfied automatically because 5 to the x power and 125 to the x power are always positive because they're exponential functions. Now, 5 to the x power equals to 1 and 125 to the x power equals to 1 when x equals to 0. Again, these conditions are automatically satisfied because we already imposed the condition that x cannot be 0. Next, let's look at the arguments. Now, in the first logarithm, there is an argument x squared plus 9x plus 15 that has to be positive. In the second one, there is x cubed that also has to be positive. The last condition means that x has to be positive and that it means that this condition is no longer needed because x greater than zero includes this condition in it. So we got two conditions that we have to satisfy if you want to solve this logarithmic equation. Now let's notice that 125 is 5 cubed and that means that 125 to the x power is 5 to the power 3x. So we'll replace 125x with 5 to the power 3x. The next thing we need is a couple facts from the logarithms. And one fact is that the exponent in the argument can be pulled out from the logarithm, the way it's written here. And the other condition is that the exponent in the base also could be pulled out from the logarithm, but not as like c but it's 1 over c. So let's use both of them. If we do, we get expression like this. So this 1 over x came out because this x came out from the base of the logarithm. 3x came out here just because there was 3x in the base here. And this 3 came out because we had the x cubed and we used this formula to pull out 3. Now, 3 and 3 are going to cancel out. Now, we, each term has 1 over x here. So, we can multiply equation by x, both sides of this equation. And it's going to cancel out. And as the result, we're going to get equation like this. Uh, next thing we notice, there are two logarithms that are being added to each other. And we know there is a formula for the sum of the logarithms, and that is logarithm of the product. So we apply that formula to get this expression. The next thing we want to do is 2 and create logarithm as the base 5 instead of 2. That is done this way. And the next thing we need to note is that on the left hand side we have log. And on the right hand side, we have log with the same base. And we should know that when logs are equal with the same base, that means that uh, arguments are equal to each other. And that gives us the expression like this. Here is the fact that 5 squared is 25. This is a cubic equation that we now need to solve. So let's do that. Before we go into solution of this equation, please notice that on the left, we have a product of two terms. One is x, the other is quadratic term in the parenthesis, and that equals to 25. 25 is positive number. So to get a positive number, when we multiply two factors, we can do it in two ways. One way is when both factors are positive, another way when both factors are negative. 
So if we impose the condition that x has to be positive, it immediately follows that the second factor has to be positive as well, and that's exactly the condition we have here. In fact, that if you solve this equation and find the solutions for it, and we impose the condition that solution has to be positive, in this case, this condition will be satisfied automatically. Let's go ahead and solve this equation. So we open the parentheses, we bring 25 on the other side, on the left-hand side. And now if you look at this equation, we can guess quickly that one of the solution is x equals to 1. And if x equals to 1 as a solution of this equation, in this case, the polynomial on the left-hand side can be written as two factors. One of them is x minus that root minus 1 times quadratic polynomial. In this quadratic polynomial, we don't know A or B, which we need to find. Uh, two ways to do it. One way is to simply divide the cubic polynomial by x minus 1, if we know the algorithm, how to do it. The other way is open this parenthesis. So now we would like what's on the left to be equal to what's on the right at all x's. That is only possible if the coefficients in front of like term are the same. So the coefficients in front of x cubed should be the same, and they are, they are ones. Coefficients in front of x squared should be the same, so 9 should be equal to a minus 1. Coefficients in front of x should be the same, so 15 should be equal to b minus a, and minus 25 should be equal to minus b. And from that, we can quickly see that a is 10 and b is 25. Now we're going to plug the values of 4a and b into this expression. This is what we're going to get. And now we know this expression, that's our cubic equation, has to be equal to 0, but will be 0 when either the first parenthesis equal to 0, and that's equal x equals to 1, we already know that, or when the quadratic equation in the second parenthesis is 0. The way we're going to solve this equation is by using the formula for quadratic equation. So in general, if I have an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, where a, b, and c are constants. Uh, this equation has two solutions that can be obtained using this formula. In our case, a equals to 1, b equals to 10, and c equals to 25. If you plug those values into this formula, uh, we'll find out that both roots of these equations are the same and equals to minus 5. Now what we need to do, we need to look at the conditions we have here for the logarithmic equation. We see that x has to be positive. It means that the solution of minus 5 has to be dropped out. And the only solution we have is x equals to 1.